Hello all my chickadees! Welcome back to my nest! Today we're going to be continuing Mushroom Oasis! Day 2 just dropped, so we get to dive in and see what happens next with our beloved Michael. If you look, I have a little Michael plushie right over here in the corner! Because, you know, he is a special boy. He's a good bean. I had, I had to have a plushie in my room here. So... <laughs> Everybody grab the Michael plushie and snuggle it up because we're going to dive back into this world and see what our little bean has in store for us now. Um, in the update, they actually updated a little bit about uh, day one, like a little bit of update with the art and a little bit of the dialogue. Um, I did go through it and it wasn't that much of a change. Um, I suggest if you want to um, play it yourself, you can go download it and watch it. Um, I do have the original um, day that we played seven months ago um, up on my channel. I'm going to link it down below if you want to watch that first if you're new to this. If not, buckle up. We're going to dive in back to my boy. Cute, innocent baby Michael who's done nothing wrong. <laughs> right? Right? Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, I'm so excited. We're going to pick up right when um, day one ended. If you look, the art is a little different now, but he's still so adorable. <laughs> Good night, Sparrow. A soft humming invades my dreams, stirring me awake. I blinked my eyes open to unfamiliar surroundings, swaddled in a blanket that clearly wasn't mine. What? Where? Oh! Oh, look at him! Oh, that's so cute! He's sitting in front of the fire, knitting. Oh! I spotted this. I spotted the familiar figure of my host sitting on a stool in front of the fire, hands deftly deftly working on the green scarf bundled in his lap. His back was towards me, but I caught glimpses of his fingers as they, the needle softly clicked between the yarn. He looked incredibly apt at using them, the, the rheumatic movements almost hypnotic as the fibers wound together into an intricate pattern. I slowly stirred into a sitting position, rubbing at my eyes. He's so cute. I'm s the moment quickly caught his attention, ears flicking in my direction before his eyes trained upon me. Look, he it, it is a new art style. It, oh, and his face is rounder, I think. Oh, it's so cute. Just like last night, his pupils blew up as we made eye contact. His expression lit up the instant he saw me. Sparrow! Hey, I'm glad you're finally awake. <laughs> you looked so tired. I I didn't want to disturb you until you gotten enough rest. Hmm? Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Sparrow. D did you sleep well? Ugh. I was still too groggy to answer his question, a yawn slipping out as I stretched. Oh, oh, reading yawn made me yawn. <laughs> I'm getting in character. That's what it is. I'm getting in character. He smiled kindly, a soft chuckle under his breath. Like a baby, then. He pointed over his shoulder to the door beside the fireplace, tilting his head towards it. You can freshen up in the bathroom if you like, while I start on making us some food. I have eaten breakfast by now, but I want you to join me when the food is still hot. How do eggs and toast sound? Ooh, sounds delicious. Great. I I'll see you in the kitchen then. He tucked away his knitting materials and set it aside. Oh, I also have a surprise for you after breakfast. It it's not the most exciting surprise, but um, just join me when you're ready. He ducked into the kitchen without another glance. 
I could hear his boots thud about the floorboards, cab cabinets opening and closing in succession with the kitchen. I suppose that's my cue. I rolled out of bed, leaving the warmth of Michael's blankets and trotting up to the door Michael pointed out. Oh, it's all, it's wooden. It's a wooden tub and toilet. Oh, cool. Stepping aside, I didn't know what I was expecting when he said he had a bathroom, but it was surprisingly spacious. Everything looked like it was carved and polished out of wood. He seemed to have everything you find in a modern bathroom. A sink with a cabinet, a shower, and a tub, even a toilet. Curious, I crept over to the toilet in particular, inspecting it. There wasn't a tank like you expect where the water would be stored. Instead, there was a compartment to the side full of sawdust and a scoop. I expected it to at least have a bit of a smell, but it was surprisingly odorless. So is it like a, a litter box? There was even a roll of toilet paper on the side. It was no flushing system, but it was hygienic. Michael must have done his research. Walking over to the sink, I stared at the faucet before hesitantly switching it, twisting it. I jumped when I heard a rush of water pouring in, swirling in the basin before disappearing to who knows where. Well, how? How am I impressed by a damn functioning bathroom sink? Because he is out in the middle of nowhere. I helped with the dishes last night. I already knew Michael had plumbing. Shaking my head, I finished freshening up and headed to the kitchen. Michael looked up as I entered, a steaming kettle in his hand with two empty mugs on the counter. It might have been the lighting, but he was taller than I remembered. Glancing to the table, I could see he already finished up plating our food. Oh, wow. You work fast. Don't look at him. <laughs> Michael looked proud of himself. Can't have my guests stay on an empty stomach. Go on, have a seat. I'll join you in a moment. I returned his smile and sat down, stomach grumbling as I looked over our plates. Ooh, that looks good. Once again, Michael was generous with the serving sides. Fat slices of bread were perfectly toasted with buttered, crisp buttered sides. Scrambled eggs looking tantalizing, the smell of savory herbs wafering into my nose. My mouth watered. Michael set down a steaming mud mug beside me before settling into his own seat. Peeking above the rim, I could see small flowers floating about, tinting the water yellow. It smelled faintly of apples. I recognized the yellow dried pellets on the tea packaging I've seen before. Oh, chamomile? He nodded. I hope you like it. I'm sure I will. He, his smile widening, his tail swaying at the tip by his feet. He seemed more relaxed, showing his natural features this morning. Any trace of panic and hesitation from last night were gone, replaced by a look of contentment. Good, good. The baby can be comfort comfortable. He deserves it, okay? He deserves it to be accepted and just be himself. Oh, look at the little pal. Oh, well, food in his mouth, but that's still cute. Yes, I'm going to say cute like a bazillion times, okay? I've waited seven months to get back into seeing Michael again, and I'm going to get my fanboying out. <laughs> <coughs> Michael bit into his toast, and I followed suit. The food was as delicious as I expected. The chunk of toast I bit into was heavenly. The butter sweet on my tongue, and the eggs... Something about home-cooked food is just the best. Michael was happy to eat in silence, occasionally looking up at me as I enjoyed my food. He smiled when our eyes met, his bottom pair narrowing into a happy squint. I wondered he'd be open to some questions. Hey. Hmm? Do you mind if I ask? <laughs> Babe. Let's learn more! Okay, how did you learn to cook? How do you have plumbing in your house? 
What's it like living in the woods? Oh, I want to know all of them. How do you have plumbing in your house? I mean, what's it like living in the woods? Let's say what it's like living in the woods. I still can't believe how cozy you managed to make it, considering the whole middle of nowhere thing. And do you have a chicken? Where did you get the eggs? It wasn't like this when I found it. No. It was a major, uh, fixer-upper? So the cabin was abandoned. I never would have guessed. Yeah, I I'm really happy to get to live somewhere permanent for once. It's not much, but it's home. What's it like? Peaceful. Quiet. I do like it a lot. The force provides me with everything I need. And and nobody bothers me for the way I look out here. His ears twitch slightly. Sometimes you just happen to end up where it's most convenient for you and everyone else. The way he avoided my eyes as he said that gave me the impression there was something more to it. Like his home wasn't just out of convenience, but a fear of something else. Rejection, perhaps? Or something worse? A anyway, I don't really have anything else to say about it, unless there's something specific you want to ask. He doesn't think about his answer much before beaming at me. He's so happy. What about you? I know you've told me a little about yourself, but what's it like being you? I scoffed, waving a hand. Please, I'm the least interesting person in this room, trust me. His eyes were shining in earnest as he leaned forward. Tell me anyway. Oh, well, I told him about my life, at least the parts I was comfortable with sharing. Just like last night, his eyes didn't leave my face, occasionally darting around my features in, in interest. The direct oogling was making me nervous, but I suppose I was doing the exact same thing when it was his turn to talk. Eventually, I came to the topic of my job and the woes of living in modern capitalism. I am a bit jealous. You have the whole cottage core aesthetic practically perfect. His face morphed into a confused pout. Cottage core? I explained it to him in my own words. Oh, you're saying you want to live the way I do? Out in the woods? I nodded without hesitation. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind showing you the ropes. His tone seemed strangely litted. What do you mean? N never mind. I anyway, I don't get what the appeal is, but it's not easy either, you know. The force provides, but it's up to me to make use of it. Starting out was... A dark look crossed over his face then, as if relieving a bitter memory. Oh, he had it rough when he started living out here, did he? Rough. Oh, I love all his new expressions. But I'm built for survival. I feel like I'm I feel like asking him to elaborate would make things awkward. I decided to veer the topic into a different direction. Doesn't it get lonely? Mm, sometimes. But I'm used to it. He smiled, his eyes lighting up. Besides, I have you at the moment, don't I? I never thought I'd enjoy having someone around. I just noticed my mic got turned down a little bit, so if it was hard to hear me, I apologize. I turned it back up now. You you must be real, really special. Oh, we get to learn the other things. Yay! How did you learn to cook? Cottage pie is a quick... Oh, this is us. Cottage pie is a pretty complicated recipe. I just wonder if anyone taught you how to cook. 
I'd be lucky if someone could teach me how to make bold eggs, Firefly. But it was a trial and error, mostly. My earlier endeavors were, <laughs> um, pretty much inedible. I picked up a thing or two about cooking, though, so your taste buds aren't going to fall victim to any nasty creations in my early days, at, like in my early days at least. Um, s speaking of, did, did you enjoy dinner last night? Of course I did. You're a really good cook, Michael. I, I'm i glad. It, it probably wasn't obvious, but I, I'm really happy I got to cook for you. I don't get guests often, in case you couldn't tell. I should ask you to cook for me every day, then. Oh, look how happy he is! He grinned at my joke, looking pleased. I'd be happy to. I chuckled as I took another bite. So, what's your favorite thing to cook? He lit up at the question. Fried mushrooms. Isn't that cannibalism? <laughs> Fried mushrooms? Yeah. There's plenty to find and it's easy to make. Huh. I do remember finding a patch of mushrooms yesterday. They smell pretty funky, though. You remember that? Hmm? What was that? Nothing. I anyway, mushrooms were the only thing I had for a while, before figuring out I could eat other stuff like roots and veggies. Do you forage all your ingredients? Mostly. The times I figured out how to catch fish and hunt game were the best of my life, I tell you that. My first taste of meat? He did an awkward version of a chef's kiss, as if mimicking something he saw on a television once. M Mama, <laughs> Mama Mia. <laughs> Was he trying to say Mama Mia? <laughs> he continued before he could. I could even dwell on it a second longer. But. Excuse me. I keep yawning. But nothing beats what you humans uh, are able to make. You guys go nuts with ingredients. Rice was a challenge. It's a precious ingredient since I actually had to get some from a store. But once I figured out how to make it nice and fluffy, I consider it a special treat. I did a double take. You go to the store? Yeah. Where else would I get it? I, I, I thought you would grow it yourself or something. He laughed as I flushed in embarrassment. It's flattering you think I'm capable of something that impressive. But no. There's only so much the forest can provide. But what about money? We're talking about human currency, right? Otherwise, how would you even... Do you actually have a job? A thought occurred to me. Or did you steal it? He almost looked offended. Do you take me for a criminal? N no but that would mean then h how? Michael bit into his toes, two eyes winking in mischief. I have my ways, Firefly. What's that supposed to mean? Does he did he use his like hypnosis to be like I need this rice. You gave it away. <laughs> How do you have plumbing in your house? I know it's a silly question, but I can't stop thinking about it. Oh, you're wondering about that? The embarrassed look on my face is probably enough of an answer. Oh, well, it's nothing fascinating. Just rainwater I got stored above the cabin. Just rainwater? Okay, I, I see how he did it. He nodded. I did... I detected a hint of pride as he continued. It's actually a recent installment, believe it or not. Granted, the project took a while. Gathering materials, figuring out the tools, finding the right instruction manuals. Plus, I had to figure out where to store the water tank. And don't worry, I installed a filtration system so it's safe for us to use. I check in every few weeks to make sure nothing's contaminated. He is such a clever boy! 
gravity feeder uh, water system. That sounded daunting. Especially considering he lived all the way out here in the woods. You did all that on your own? I kind of had to. Anyway, it took a whole lot of collaborating and adjusting, but it really worked out. And now that I think about it, I'm glad you get to be comfortable here during your stay, too. Does that answer your question? Okay. Wee! Okay. Uh, nope, not quit. Yeah, where did you learn to do all that? Well, he did say in instruction manuals. I had to figure out a lot of things on my own. There was a there was a faint hit of exhaustion in his eyes. But to answer your question, I go to libraries a lot. It's where I learned about a majority of things. The fact that he even ventured into buildings at all surprised me. What kind of disguise do you put on, baby? I want to know. And if I'm really lucky, they have those neat DIYs and workshop manuals archived for anyone to browse through. It took a while took me a while to figure everything out a really long time actually but hey I had nothing but time and it paid off I'm considering upgrading the toilet next but for now the composting setup works fine learned about that in an old camping guide I paused to take a breath he paused to take a breath as if he hadn't talked this much in a while I'm uh, I'm rambling, but that's how I did it. Is there anything else you want to ask? Wait, you've been to libraries? His ears perked up, posturing, straightening. Oh, yeah. I can't tell you enough how much books have helped me. I've made it this far only because I quickly figured out how to read. Oh, he taught himself how to read, too. Well, figured out that I can read. Do you visit often? In my early days, any chance I could get. Nowadays, I stick to the side of the forest, though. In his early days? How old are you? Did he just appear in the forest one day? I have so many questions. Gotta make sure people don't wander too far off that, um, than they're meant to. I paused in my chewing at the te teasing lit in his voice. Hey, <laughs> I'm joking. Anyway, if you're wondering about what I do, what I do about this, he gestured towards his face. I just have to make sure everything's covered up. You'd be surprised how little people pay attention to me when I bundle up just right. Do people not give you trouble? He shrugged nonchalantly. Small town libraries are usually so empty from my experience. And people just mind their own business there. Huh. I guess that's true. Can't remember the last time I visited a library. I guess libraries would be Michael's equivalent to the World Wide Web. I should introduce him to the internet sometime. Actually, maybe not. <laughs> that, he... That might be too much info for the baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I mean, I bet Michael would have a freaking field day <laughs> if we gave him the internet. Oh, no. <laughs> but we don't even have our phone right now, so we can't show him examples of the internet or anything. But hey, there, there's normally like an old computer at the library, so maybe he has, like, you know, seen the li uh, internet a little. Not without parental controls. <laughs> Finally satisfied, I nodded and went back to eating my food. Yeah, I put the parental controls on so he doesn't go to naughty sites. <laughs> Protect his innocence. I'm starting to know a lot more about Michael. He didn't directly say it, but it felt like he was lonelier than he was letting on. Not to mention how he managed to make a home for himself. All on his own. I had to wonder if he had anyone at all. Do you have any family around? Family? 
his expression turned sullen for a moment before he looked sheepish. Remind me how that works again? I, I get the concept based on some books I've read. I don't have what you call parents, if that's what you're asking. My mouth dropped open in shock. No parents? He shrugged and took another bite of toast. Not that I recall. Then how did you- <laughs> He interrupted us. We were like, how did you? And he just went, thunk. What's that like? Living with so many people like you in such a close proximity. Huh? That's how it works, right? You and other humans living in one house. And you have this, uh, dinner thing that makes you relate to the rest? That won't make us a family, right? Was he talking about DNA? He definitely threw me off. But I had to answer somehow. N not just that. Family is... Oh. Poor... So, did he just, like, appear in the forest? Like, because, you know, apparently there's some weird mushrooms going on. Is he, like, a part of those mushrooms? Did he just pop out from there? People you're related to, like your mom and your dad and your siblings and relatives. People that you love and care about. Who love and care about you, too. Actually, I guess they are just people you live close. I like this. People that you love and care about who love and care about you, too. He seems intrigued. Is that so? That does sound nice. Is there anyone you love and care about? Of course I do. I have a family. Yeah, I love my friends. Your friends can be considered family, too? Yeah. I don't see why they we have to be related to be a family. I even consider my cat family. Me too. Me too. They are my sons. <laughs> oh. And this is the same for all families? I bit my lip, pondering the question. It would be naive to think that. A lot of families do love and take care of one another, but not everything's perfect. Sometimes that love can be misplaced or taken advantage of or even abused. Michael looked thoughtful. So it starts with love? I read some stories about that. Love, I mean. Though certain feelings just don't make sense to me. At, at least from a reader's perspective. I guess you'll have to experience for yourself to understand. He stared at me unblinking for a moment. Yeah, you might be right. I never considered that. Then again, who would bother loving a monster like me, huh? Oh, Michael. Michael, we love you. You're a good little bean. What? You're not a monster. I look like one, don't I? That's besides the point. You're not denying it, though. I'm just... It's okay. You don't have to lie to me. So, family. Right. To be fair, everyone's definition of family could be different. What about you? What's your definition of family? Michael looked surprised I asked him that question. I don't know. I never had one. And I think your answer just confused me more. Well, if you ever figure it out, let me know. Michael stared at the remaining crumbs on his plate before he nodded, avoiding my gaze. Sure. We both fell quiet, the lull in the conversation blinking at us in a comfortable silence. All this family talk. It reminded me of the reason why I'm out here in the first place. To look for my beloved cat. A sight I might never be able to see again. I couldn't help the sinking feeling in my chest. The growing pit in my stomach. I wish... I wish I was able to find Sir Fluffles. You would have loved him. 
Michael opened his mouth to say something, but changed his mind. My voice warbled as a lump formed my throat. S sorry. I just miss him so much. I keep thinking if I went looking for him sooner, maybe I would have been able to find him by now. He was quick to speak up. You did your best, Firefly. No one else could have gone the lengths that you did. You almost risked getting yourself... I'm sure wherever he is, he's doing okay. Oh, he's lying to protect us. He knows. Do you really think so? I, I know so. His voice was laced with confident assurance, despite the worried look on his face. I nodded with a quiet sniff. I hope so. He's just important to me is all. Michael looked like he wanted to reach across the table for me, but sighed instead. Actually, I'm sorry, Sparrow. I should tell you. Oh, is he going to tell us the cat stead? Because in day one, um, there's like a patch of mushrooms we step on, and there's a little, like, outline of a cat. The, the mushrooms ate the cat. It's sad. Um. Oh, he's not going to tell us he changed his mind. But maybe I do have a family now that I think about it. That was the surprise I mentioned before. Wait, really? He nodded. Are you done? I could take you to meet them right now. I looked down at my plate. During the conversation, I didn't even realize I'd finished the meal. Yeah, I'm done. His movements were quick, sta stacking our empty plates and mugs and setting them in the sink. He grasped my hand before I could say another word, pulling me up and heading outside with me in tow. As the door swung open, I could only see the forest ahead before he tugged me along as he rounded the side of the cabin. Oh, look at his garden! Oh! Almost immediately, my peripherals was assaulted with greens on both sides. I figured he was the type to grow his own veggies, but to see it in person as confirmation was a whole different thing. With Michael leading the way, I only had a moment to take in the surrounding garden. He had marked the different plots with messy drawings on small wooden signs jutting out of the dirt. Carrots, lettuce, potatoes trellises of tomatoes and beans. I wouldn't have been able to differentiate one plant from another without the signs. Even the chamomile from our tea just now grew abundant close by, the small buds swaying gently. I bumped into Michael as he suddenly stopped. The man looked over his shoulder to beam at me. We reached what looked like a fenced-off area, with a bit of netting stretched all around. Oh, right there. <gasps> Does he have chickens? He stepped aside, watching me as my eyes widened. He has chickens! Look at them! They're so cute! Three fat, happy little hens strutted about like they owned the place. As he entered through the gate, the hens swarmed over in an instant at Michael's feet, circling him and pecking at his boots. Ladies, meet Sparrow. Sparrow, these are Moir? Moir? San, sans to you and primrose, or like I like to I like to call them Marmar, Sunny and Rosy. Oh, <laughs> look how happy that chicken is! <coughs> he ducked to pick one up, fluffing up her feathers as he smiled. He gently scratched the hen's little head, while which I assumed was rosy. She practically melted at his pampering, eyes sliding shut. The other two flapped their wings in a huff and went about their business once more. Michael leaned close, beckoning me to pet Rosie. She was so soft. Rosie's the oldest. She doesn't lay eggs anymore, but I couldn't bring myself to, um, you know. So I brought her some friends. 
Mom Bar came first. Sunny's a little recent, a more recent addition. Who do you think? Do we make a good family? Yes, yes, you do. I laughed and nodded, watching as Rosie no nuzzled into Michael's chest. I didn't expect chickens, of all things. Were you expecting something else? I was expecting it to be someone else. Oh, oh, you. He stopped smiling. Come on, chickens are family. <laughs> no, when you look at like me, people generally don't stick around. There's that negative self-talk again. You don't even look that bad. His eyes flicked to mine, a look of pleasant surprise crossing his face. She really thinks so? Yeah. You can't be that naive, Firefly. I mean it. He let out a polite scoff as he scratched Rosie's head absently. You generally believe people wouldn't run away at the sight of me? Well, I didn't. His smile turned smug, the corner of his lips lifting just a bit. Of course you didn't. Because you couldn't. Shoot. He wasn't wrong. I was pretty much paralyzed in his bed when we first met. But still, I don't think you look that bad. Is that so? Describe me then. Cute little green bean. <laughs> green bean mushroom. What? You heard me. Look at me and describe what you see. For a second I thought he was being condescending, but looking at his eyes, all I could see was a bit of playfulness. Uh... He looked at me expectantly, eyes shining. You're... Tall. Go on. You have blonde hair. He gave an amused squint, his left ear twitching. What else? You have green skin and a tail. He chuckled, though there was no malice in it. But that's not all, is there? He definitely expected me to say it straight. Oh, fine. So you don't look human. So what? He hummed absently. As I was saying, animals generally don't care if you look like a monster. My heart twisted at his words. His passive nonchalance somehow made it even worse. Michael, you're not a mo- he tu A tug at my shoelace caught my attention. <laughs> a light brown hen, hen stood at my feet, her eyes, beady eyes shining. Look at the little sparkles! <laughs> Is she wanting pets or is she wanting food? Sunny flapped her wings almost expectantly. Oh, I think she likes you. Go ahead, pick her up. Gently, like how I did with Rosie. I hesitated, but slowly slowly lowered myself to cup Sunny by her wings. Lifting her up, she was quick to nestle herself until she was comfortably tucked under my arms. I could feel her wings wiggling as she nuzzled into my side. So cute. He has them pampered. <laughs> he has them so pampered. It's adorable. Michael's gaze softened as I cooed at the chicken, mimicking her small clucks. So, uh, um, did it help? Cheering you up, I mean. Oh. So that's what this was. A fuzzy feeling bloomed in my chest as he looked at me chicken in his arms and concern on his face. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Only a little? I snickered, rolling my eyes. Okay, mister, a lot. That's more like it? His proud grin was infectious. I couldn't help smiling back. We spent a bit more time with the hens, petting them until they were satisfied. Michael even showed me the spot where they liked to have their dust baths. A little chicken-shaped hole scattered about in the dry soil underneath the coop. Oh, I see them! <laughs> I see the little chicken holes. <laughs> Once the gals had enough of us, we refilled their water container before leaving. He left them some treats, proc procuring them straight out of his pockets before shutting the gate. The girls' chat excited chatter over the food faded as we made our ba way back inside the cabin. I sat by his bed as he crouched down by the fireplace. From the window, I could see the sun outside was getting higher. 
It might be close to afternoon now. Hey, Michael. Hmm? He looked at me, up at me from where he was stroking the fire. I rubbed my arms, unsure where to place my gaze. I think that's a good time for me to go now. I didn't. My expression fell, but I caught myself quickly. He'd done his best to cheer me up. It'd be inconsiderate towards him to leave in a bad mood. I might have to accept that I'll never see Sir Fluffles again. I think it's better if I focus on moving on. He was quiet for a moment, hands in his pocket. If, if you say so. But you don't have to leave just yet. We still got plenty of daylight left. A and there's some place I want to show you. Won't you come with me? I had to decide. Um, we couldn't decide. <laughs> he decided for us. Okay, okay, looks like we're gonna go um exploring a bit more. We can't go nowhere. Uh, no, no, we're good. <laughs> I, I promise I'll take you home right after. He took another step towards me. Please, Firefly? I didn't want to say it, but he looked desperate. Okay, okay. I can go with you. The joy on his face was sh shining bright as a billboard. Great! Let me go get our stuff. He disappeared into the kitchen, returning with my backpack in one hand and a satchel in the other. He passed it to me as we walked by towards the front door. Huh. I almost forgot I had this. Rustling for my bag, I found cat treats, Sir Fluffle's collar, a broken compass, and my phone! Oh, it has a little kitty charm. The battery was dead, though. Still, that's one less thing to worry about. I checked through my bag once more, finding an empty water bottle. I frowned. Distinctly remembering I forgot to pack water for my trip. No, we packed water. Or at least Michael told me I did. Didn't I? You ready? <laughs> he changed outfit and he's got a, a, a crossbow now. We going hunting? I looked up at Michael, startling when I spotted a large crossbow in his hands. He followed my gaze and shrugged. A bit with a nervous smile, like he'd been caught doing something he shouldn't be. He quickly strapped the weapon to his back and out of sight. Don't worry, I'm not going to use it unless necessary. I would hope not! He chuckled at my indignant tone. You think I'm going to let you out of the woods without guaranteeing your safety? I made a promise to get you home, so this is just an extra precaution. You don't think it's a bit much? Better safe than sorry, Firefly. He did have a point. If anyone knew these woods and the kind of danger it held, it'd be Michael. I glanced over him again, noticing he changed his oversized cardigan for something more outdoor appropriate. His eyes tracked mine, his shoulders stiffening as a tint spread across his face. He's a blush. So, so, shall we? He opened the door and waved me out. I stepped outside to glance around his front yard. The landscape wasn't anything special. It was actually left quite plain, just thick with trees and foliage. Only paths of dirt and flattened grass clued me into the routes Michael would use as he comes and goes, webbing in all directions trailing to the front door. Come to think of it, anyone passing through would be able to spot Michael's house if they squinted through the trees carefully enough. I guess he was alright that no one walked through this area in years. I heard a lock turn before Michael joined me by my side. He smiled while, wide before tipping his head in a direction, making sure I was behind him before he started watching, walking. I was hesitant, but followed suit. It was quiet as we traveled, save for the sound of nature calling out around us. The weather was bright and warm, the sun casting pretty rays through the gaps in the trees. I had to admit, enjoyable as it was, the bird calls and rustling leaves as we walked somehow brought bad memories. Yesterday was miserable. 
Chronicles Lost, tired and hungry. There was a chance I wasn't going to make it out alive. I watched Michael's back as he led the way, the man barely paying any mind to his surroundings. His ear would occasionally flick in my direction, but overall he seemed confident on where to go. Having Michael as my guide home was definitely a great reassurance. It made me even more grateful that he found me when he did. I sighed and shook off the negative feelings, keeping pace while appreciating the fresh air. I stepped up next to my companion, willing my voice to speak after plenty of silence. This is actually kind of nice. Hmm? Um, a good old nature walk. I coughed into my fist feeling embarrassed. I don't go outside as often as I should. Michael smiled kindly. I'm glad I get to bring you then. Yeah. Feels different when you know where you're going. Uh, actually, where are we going? He sensed my nervousness and laughed. Don't worry. We're almost there. I looked up and saw it before he even pointed it out. A clearing in the distance the trees growing strangely sparse in that area. I held my breath as I noticed the grass slowly start to dot with flowers, delicate blooms swaying here and there in the breeze. As we got closer, Michael watched me as my mouth dropped open, a knowing twinkle in his eyes. It was breathtaking. There's so many flowers and butterflies! Oh. A saluted little meadow of flowers, lit up by beams of light, making the scenery resemble a page from a forgotten fairy tale. Butterflies flitted around in pairs, their wings flickering and complimenting the surreal yet enchanting ambience of the whole place. Michael let me gawk some more before walking ahead, turning to face me before sitting down to relax on the grass. He slipped off his satchel and laid it on the grass by his side, along with his crossbow. I blinked out of my super, stupor and approached him, spinning around to drink everything in before plopping myself down next to him. So, what do you think? Pretty, isn't it? I nodded dumbly, dumbly before finally gl glancing to face him, the man's gaze on me softening as our eyes met. A butterfly approached us rapidly, making me flinch on instinct. Oh, that's it. He's a Disney princess. <laughs> it landed on his finger as he held it out, its wings flapping gently. He smiled at the dainty creature, a fond look on his eyes before he held it out towards me. Do you like butterflies, Sparrow? I love butterflies. I think they're okay. I'm scared of them, actually. I love butterflies. I do. I think they're so pretty. This is... This is amazing, Michael. Look at the blush. His usual prideful smirk was absent, replaced instead by a shy smile. I'm glad you like it. The sun was at a peak now. The air getting warmer as minutes passed. The leafy canopy over us provided enough cover for us not to overheat. Michael picked a flower with his other hand and placed it in my palm, his tail looping loosely around us both as my cheeks darkened. He closed his eyes and leaned back farther, the butterfly still resting on his hand. My ears caught a soft rumbling before I realized it was coming from his direction. Is he purring? Is he purring? It sounds like he's furry. <laughs> I almost wanted to ask, but I didn't want to ruin the moment. My gaze dropped as I twirled the flower in my hand, holding the stem delicately. I, th I turned the audio down, but listen. He's furry. <laughs> the gesture felt platonic but also romantic. I wonder if Michael was even interested in relationships. Being alone most of his life. 
he'd probably get tired from my presence sooner than later. Before I could contemplate further, the butterfly on Michael's finger took off, my gaze trailing after it as it left the sunlight and flew away into the woods. Which reminds me, Michael? Hmm? Don't get me wrong, this place is stunning, but is it okay if we go now? He straightened from his relaxed slouch. Why? We just got here. I chewed on my lip, hesitating. I, I love it here, I do, but I want to go home, Michael. Michael studied my face. Sparrow, do you want to leave me that badly? What? No! I just... I need time to recover from losing Sir Fluffles. I know it's silly and dramatic, but knowing he won't be there when I get home. I trailed off, another shot of guilt and regret filling my chest. I I just need to get, get it done with. I feel a hand rubbing my back. Michael nodded slowly, looking me in the eyes. His smile was gentle. Okay. I understand. Uh oh, here we go again. But maybe this place can help with that. It's a nice spot to nap in, isn't it? I picked it out just for you. Why don't you go ahead and lie down? His words made you sway, a sudden bout of sleepiness weighing heavily over your eyelids. He was right. It is a nice spot to nap in. Why were you in such a hurry? You yawned, laying back to stretch on the grass, the warmth from the ground seeping through your clothes, lulling you into a sense of comfort and safety. There you go. Just, just spend some time with me. Just a bit more. Please. Oh, here's something else I could show you. He reached into his satchel and pulled out a wooden box. It's called a Catalindia. I blinked slowly, clarity coming back as I shook my head to pay attention. The box fit <clears throat> the box fit neatly in his hand, Michael holding it as if he was typing on a phone. I could see it had a hole in the middle with thin strips of metal arranged in a triangle shape over it. What does it do? A proud smirk spread across his face. I'll show you. He began to pluck at the metallic prongs, a gentle ringing sound resonating with every flick of his thumbs. I couldn't recognize the song. He might have made it up himself. I closed my eyes, enjoying the tune. Michael gave a soft chuckle as he kept playing. Relax. Listen as long as you like, Firefly. It's really soothing. It's nice. Did he teach himself how to play too? A few minutes passed by with Michael plucking away at the instrument. The two of us sunbathing like two cats on a Sunday afternoon. I must have dozed as the ex thing next thing I knew, I felt a nudge on my shoulder. Comfy? Mm. <laughs> he chuckled low when I refused to open my eyes. I mean, would you rather stay? <laughs> Are you making a, uh, a flower crown, Michael? My eyes shot open, my whole body jerking to sit up. Michael glanced at me, Columbia in his lap and a half-forgotten forget-me-not chain in his hand. What? I shook my head, slapping at my cheeks. I can't believe I fell asleep. I, I just... It's all right. He cut me off, his sigh was heavy. I was hoping... Never mind. He patted my shoulder, though a smile didn't reach his eyes. Thanks for being here with me. Maybe we can do this again sometime. If 
I ever see you again. Let's get you home. He rolled over to his feet and stood up, brushing off dirt and fixing his satchel. Come on. We gathered our things and set off into the unknown once more. Well, unknown to me, at least. Michael seemed to have a map of it, the place ingrained in his brain. You still seem a bit sleepy still, so let's freshen up, okay? We walked a bit further away from the clearing, coming across the river. Compared to the rest of the path we walked, the area was shaded, considerably by the thick canopy of leaves over us. The flowing water looked inviting as I knelt down by the bank, Michael idling close by. I dipped my hands in, eager to wash my face. The water was refreshing and cooled my heated skin in the afternoon sun. I pulled my hands back to see Michael peeking over my shoulder into my reflection, smiling with a faraway look on his face. He startled as our gaze met, Iris's darting way to look at himself instead. <laughs> Immediately, his expression changed, his ears flattening, a grimace twisting his features as his lips curled back. Oh, he sees himself in the water, the reflection, and he doesn't like it. I'd never seen such con contempt in his eyes as I did then, staring at his own visage. He stepped away, retreating underneath the cover of a tree to lean against it with crossed arms. He doesn't notice me watching. I patted my hands dry on my shirt and approached him. You ready? Yeah. I stopped him before he could turn to leave. He looked at me with a questioning look, tipping his uh, head. I hesitated. I wasn't the type to speak my mind directly. Most of the time, I'd kept things to myself and let things go by. But nobody should look at themselves and have that sort of reaction. Hey. You know you're not, um, I might as well be frank. You're not a monster, Michael. He looked taken back. What, what makes you say that? I saw how you were looking at yourself. How you talk about yourself. N none of it is true. I kept telling you, keep telling you, you're more than just your appearance. I don't know what compelled me to do it, but I did it anyway. I reached for his hands and held them between us. His eyes widened at the content. Contact. All it took was a day with you, and truthfully, I think you're the most amazing person I've ever met. He made a choked noise. I, 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 I'm just some old nobody compared to you. Th that's not... Shut up and listen. <laughs> he promptly shut his mouth with an audible click of his teeth. From where I stand, you saved my life. You taking care of me better than I could ever ask for from a stranger. That already proves to me you're not the monster you think you are. You're charming. You're smart. You're sweet. You're a million more wonderful things, but you are not a monster. I take a second to compose myself, lowering my voice. You may look different, Michael, but guess what? His multiple eyes stared into mine, ears flattening as if fearing for the worst. That makes you all the more beautiful to me. His breath hitched. I could feel his hands squeezing mine, fingers trembling. It was like he forgot how to breathe. I realized my hands were getting sweaty. I pulled away hastily, scratching at my neck and avoiding his gaze. I could feel the blood rush to my face. I could dunk my whole head in the river and it'd probably let off steam. So sorry, that came out of nowhere. It just didn't feel right if I didn't say anything. I hope you understand. An awkward silence passed between the two of us. Um, anyway. I caught him mumbling under his breath. I can't let you leave. What? I, I said you can't leave. I mean, not without your cat, right? I frowned. <coughs> I've already tried, Michael. Like you said, it was stupid for me to just wander off in the woods, as if I find him through dumb luck. He paused, his fists clenching. 
but I haven't. Huh? I haven't tried. I know these woods better than anyone. I can try looking for him. But, but that means you can't leave yet. Michael, I appreciate the offer, but I don't think I should stick around any longer. I have a job and responsibilities and... And... Oh, wow, we're seeing double, triple. Oh, wow. Dude, turn it down a notch, will ya? <laughs> you hissed in pain, a sudden migraine overcoming your senses. She felt sick, your stomach wriggling itself into knots. It felt like the word world was warping around you as your legs wobbled. Your body buckled over as you resisted the urge to vomit. Michael caught you as you slumped gracefully to the ground. Your head resting on his shoulder as he cradled you close. H hey, you don't look so good. Your vision doubled as he spoke, his speech oozing together words into an indecipherable mess. Are you okay? Do you need me to carry you home? Oh fuck. Yes please, yes please, yes please, yes please! <laughs> okay, no problem. Just hang in there. Hang on to me. Dude, he really turned that up. He's like, I think I'm caring about you. I, I think I'm really, really caring about you. I really, really can't let you go now. No, no. <laughs> he must be terrified that if we leave, we'll never see him again. We'll never come back and, like, he'll be alone. Boy, you turned down that a little bit. You gave us an instant headache. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You don't deserve this. If I could just... Just one more day with you. I'd be the happiest man alive. Here we are. Let's get you tucked in. Um, I should give you some clothes. Especially since you'll be staying another night. You're okay with that, aren't you? That's all from day two! A Mushroom Oasis demo! More updates coming in the future. Tell me what you think of the game. Any support feedback is highly appreciated. Thank you for playing. Ah! <laughs> I loved it! I loved it! It was so good! Um, sorry if I was clapping and made it way too loud. Sorry. <laughs> but, oh, that's awesome! Heck yeah! We learned so much more about Michael that he's a very smart little bean. Apparently he's been on his own forever. He doesn't have parents. He has chickens who he absolutely pampers. Oh goodness. Mmm. This was great. This was great. Um, I'm gonna have a link to the game page down below as well as day one that I played. And please let me know what you thought about this. What do you think of the development? Oh, goodness. This little bean. He's just so lonely. He doesn't want to be alone anymore. Okay. Okay. I'm very excited for day three. It was really, really wor worth the wait for uh, day two. So, I know day three is going to be even more worth it. Because, wow. Wow. Michael. Michael, baby. Okay, okay, I'm I'm done fanboying. I'm done fanboying for now. But um <laughs> I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.